Warmest greetings in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. Wherever you are on your journey of faith, God meets you here on this day when we will begin our journey with Jesus to the foot of the cross. Let us join together as one people to say, Hosanna, Hosanna, and peace to God's people on earth. We are gathered together in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O God of mercy and might, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ, and preserve us until the resurrection, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing. According to St. Matthew, glory to you, O Lord. When the disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the, Lord's, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on the colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them, they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna 
in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to worship. I'm preaching to an empty sanctuary looking into a camera. I would rather be seeing all of you with the busy kids uh, rustling in the back with maybe a few people yawning over there by the sound booth and you know, the, the latecomers coming in just a few moments late to worship. Uh, I would much rather see you here in the sanctuary than be imagining you by looking into this camera. But this is the day and the time that we live in right now. Things are different, yet there's also familiarity, especially for me and for the worship leaders gathered here to sing the song, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, to see palms on the altar. In our typical Palm Sunday worship, we're gathered out there in the Crossway Center with children waving branches and singing and the bell choir ringing and our amazing choir leading us in a processional into the worship space. And I've been imagining that this past week in preparation for this service. Yet, while it's different today, the beautiful promise of the gospel remains the same. I hope for you, as it was for me, the story of Jesus riding triumphantly into Jerusalem on a donkey was familiar, and that familiarity of the gospel gave you some peace. Living in this time of familiar practices, yet while experiencing them in a new way, is strange. Everything from uh, our morning routines from driving here to the church and seeing so few vehicles on the road to a grocery store trip where if you're halfway down the aisle with your cart and someone turns the corner, they wait for you to finish your shopping in the aisle before they make their way down to grab some salsa and chips. At least that's what's on my shopping list a lot these days. My morning routine on Sunday is very strange right now. I'm used to coming here to the church early and seeing Chad and Megan and Jacob and Tiffany and Chelsea and preparing the worship space and Sunday mornings now are quiet. And I know that you are gathering in your homes and wherever you find yourself for worship too. This tension is strange. Familiar practices that have taken on a new flavor has caused me to think a little bit about the waves of emotion that are, I think, coming upon us, uh, each of us, in different ways. In any given moment or day, I'm feeling, this is okay. We're going to get through this, no problem. And then I'll have those moments or those parts of the day where it feels just too stressful and unfamiliar. And I'm thinking, this can't soon end soon enough. Living in tension is familiar for Christians, whether we know it or not. When we hear the story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, there's a paradox unfolding in this story and in Jesus' life that's familiar and expected and yet surprising and strange all at the same time. I think it's important for each of us to hear the words and to believe the words that we're going to be okay. And I want you to hear those words for yourself and your family and your friends. You're going to be okay. For Christians, what it means to be okay is shaped by Jesus' own teachings. His life, His death, and His resurrection. These are the foundations of what it means to be Christian, and when we hear the words and believe them that we are going to be okay, it's shaped by Jesus. Being okay is different than what we might imagine. 
being okay looks a lot like the story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem today. Think of the tension and the paradox that the story presents to us of familiar things with an unfamiliar twist. We know and can imagine what it would be like to gather on a roadside and cheer the entry of a long-awaited-for king and to wave branches, but to see him on a humble donkey or on the foal of a donkey in humility and peace isn't the image of a triumphant king riding in gallantly with a sword in his hand. It's a king who brings a quiet peace. Think of the crowds who are cheering on the one hand, yet the rest of the town is saying, Who is this? And the town is in a turmoil. They're not sure what to make of it. Think of Jesus who teaches us about the everlasting life that he is bringing to us and to all people, yet he rides into Jerusalem knowing that he's going to his death. Think of Jesus teaching his followers that to gain your life, we must give it up. We must lose our lives in order to find eternal life, to be given this new life from Him. These are familiar and yet strange teachings. They're the foundation of faith that we live by. To be okay in a time of crisis looks different for us Christians. It doesn't mean we are not afraid. It doesn't mean that we don't have moments of stress or anger or frustration. The faith that God has given us that dwells deeply within our hearts is the foundation that teaches us we need not fear, even though darkness might close in. We need not be afraid because our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd, is with us. Even though there is strangeness and uncertainty around us, the constant of Jesus' life, his death and resurrection, and the promise of the Holy Spirit in our lives remains the same. We follow Jesus as he rides into Jerusalem, not knowing on the one hand how his future will play out, but yet knowing death comes to him. We're not afraid of death, Christians. We're not afraid of what each day might bring, not because of our superior strength or confidence or resilience that we have that no one else has. We have the strength of the author of creation who has blessed us with a peace that surpasses all understanding. We have this faith that God gives us, a hope, a light that shines in the darkness, a beauty, a promise that does not fade with time. It does not lose value in a crash. It cannot be quarantined or infected. We have the strength of Almighty God within us. So whether we live or we die each day, we live in faith. And so we're going to be okay. No matter what this day brings for you and for me and for the church gathered in our homes or around the world, this journey we make into Jerusalem on this Holy Week as we journey into Monday, Thursday and Good Friday and Easter Sunday, the familiarity and the promise and hope of eternal life in the face of darkness gives us strength. This strength runs deep within you. You know it. It's the faith of our ancestors. It's the faith of Israel. It's the faith of our children. It's the strength of God poured out into each of us. To hear and know and believe the words that we are going to be okay are rooted in the cross, a symbol of life in the face of death. And we know the promise of the empty tomb. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. For you are the faithful. The light of Christ shines in you brighter each day. Together let us gather and worship and celebrate Jesus, who is our great shepherd. 
who guides us into eternal life. And the people said, Amen. Dean Morin, 
Amy Simmons, Etta, Dan Garretts, Beth Hoosman, and Ron and Edie Broughton. Into your loving arms we also lift to you the family and friends mourning the loss of Travis Zeck and Christelle Erlob. God of mercy, we pray for all who will join your journey to the cross this holy week. In all things, show us the ways that you call us to die for self, to live for you, and to give of ourselves for the sake of others. These and all our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, we lift to you, O God, according to our steadfast love, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. On this journey to the cross, God's peace settle around your shoulders. Christ's love lift up your face with courage and strength, and the Spirit breathe into you the hope that rises with each new day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. in the life of the church. I want to thank uh, the ministry team who's been gathering here to continue the mission uh, for you all, wherever you find yourself. Uh, Chelsea, doing an amazing job with church school, and Pastor Megan with confirmation and the other ministries that are going on. It's a good thing to be the church together, especially in the midst of a changed world. Thank you to so many families who have signed up for Simply Giving to support the mission of the church um, in the past few weeks. If you haven't done that, since we're not gathering here for worship and, and passing the offering plate, it's a great time to hop on the LCC uh, web page and go to the giving tab and sign up for regular electronic giving. You also can give an offering by text. Now, 
We'll put a number up on the screen for you. You can simply text a number, uh, the value of your offering, to the number on the screen, and you'll receive a link back from e-service payments, and you can set up giving that way too. On-site ministry is suspended, but the mission continues, and we are strong together as the body of Christ. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.